So like always, I want to thank you guys for coming out and covering Penn State football. Um, really proud of our guys. Battled. Uh, we're resilient. Found a way to get a win. Um, found a way to make plays at critical moments. Deny's play obviously was huge. Keandre's play was huge. Drew responding like that. So uh, I'm just proud of the guys. So obviously we got some things that we got to get cleaned up and corrected. Um, but moving forward, you know, we got to get back to stacking days, stacking wins, uh, and learn from the last two weeks' experiences. So appreciate you guys coming out and open up to questions. Chin Drew, um, was it somewhat, um, I don't know, relieving that you were able to hit a deep pass after, you str after struggling all year to hit a deep pass in a big situation? Um, and what does it say about Drew that he was able to rebound after the pick? No, but it was awesome. I enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome. Um, I wouldn't describe it that way, but but yeah, you know, and obviously Drew being able to sit in there and and deliver that ball, um, and Keandre be able to make make the play and finish and stay in bounds, was awesome. You know, it was awesome. As as you guys know, we've talked about it enough, and we've talked about it a bunch. We got to continue to be able to do that. Um, but that was awesome. It was also also some pretty good examples of shots we called where we threw the check down and got explosives there too. Now I'm just too soon. Too soon. Yeah, I, that's what I, I think I, I think I covered that. I think I said, yeah, it was awesome for Drew as well to deliver that ball in that situation um, and respond. He's done a great job protecting the football all all year long. That was his first interception. Um, you know, I hadn't want to talk, hadn't wanted to talk about it, but I think he broke the record, all-time NCAA record for for completions without an interception. Um, you know, now that's you know we can move on from that, but uh, but I'm proud of him, and that was a big play, and he showed a lot of resiliency. What goes through that play? How does that end up unfolding? Is that something that you call from the sideline? Is that an audible? Can you take us through that? Because on the it, shot, on the yeah. Shot. On the, on the last one to Keandre, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we called, I don't know, like every game, we probably called eight. Um, you know, typically when we call a, a go route, it's not just a go. So it's, it's a read route. If they're off and bailing, then we sit it down in front of them. The one that we threw to Keandre earlier in the game on the crossing route that we missed, that was the same exact play call. Uh, they bailed their corners. And obviously, we're not just going to throw it. Uh, went to take the check downs, excuse me, the, the, the fallouts, or however you want to describe them. And then came to Keandre, and we missed it. Then we called it again. I think that's the one that we hit Katron, and then Katron uh, was able to advance the ball up the field. Uh, so we, we've, we've called him every game. We've probably called 10 to 12 shot plays every game. For him against Indiana, can you describe the mental, emotional toll that's on your players playing in the Big Ten, having to respond? Um, it can that be difficult for guys? And how proud are you of what they did today? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to talk about that. No one cares. Let, let's be honest. I mean, for me to sit here and say that, um, I appreciate the question and I understand the question, but no, no one cares. So for us. Um, we got to find a way to handle adversity during games, adversity during the week, and adversity in life, and rebound and rebound and and tune out all the other stuff. Um, and I think for the most part, we've done a pretty good job of that. But to your point, is it is it easy? No, no. But no one cares. Um, particularly when you went up ten points, uh, you know, regrouped uh, in the second half there. Um, you know, were they throwing some things at you that maybe you didn't expect, or just overall the uh, what you thought of the defense today? No, we just we just had some blown coverages that we haven't had, and sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you, you make a mistake, and the offense doesn't find you when you make the mistake, and um, you know, we made some mistakes. You know, this game specifically the one where it's either a corner fire or a linebacker um, blitz depending on the, the formation and the split. And we ended up, both of them ended up coming. And, um, you know, we were obviously in trouble. So we just, we made some mistakes this week that are uncharacteristic for us. Got to give Indiana credit. Um, they did a good job. We think that we went into that game feeling like that quarterback's a good player. Thought he played well today. Thought he played really well today. 
Um, but that, that's, that's essentially what happened. We blew, we blew some coverages and got caught when we blew them. A sheet on your belt today. Uh, I don't think that is typical of you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Were you more hands-on in, in play calling today at all as you have been in other games? Yeah, that, that play sheet's been on my hip for 13 years. Every game for 13 years. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Jolander and running a little bit. Is that a result of a conversation from last week's film or, or looking at something, or did it just present itself a little bit more today for Drew to, to tuck it under and run some more? No, we always want to climb the pocket. You know, um, whenever you get pressure, a big mistake you can make is drifting in the pocket, and then obviously it becomes difficult for the offensive tackles. You want to drive up into the pocket, and then that's when you take the checkdowns, and if the checkdowns aren't there, then, then take off. And, um, you know, that's where you can, you know, take a second and long and, and create a third and manageable. So, you know, he's done a good job of that. I think he can continue to do that. Um, I think there's some things in the run game where he can help us as well on some of the zone read stuff. If, if we'll pull it and run it out the backside or pull it and throw it, um, I think those things will help us as well right now. I think that's some of the things we've talked about, you know, when Bo's in there they're concerned about that, which has opened some opportunities in the running game, you know, for, for Potts and, and some of the backs. Um, so I think we got we to gotta be willing to do more of that. In that position. You said a few weeks ago, Drew doesn't need any more firsts. He's played enough. You know, there are no, no more firsts, really. But in this situation, to overcome the interception, to get the touchdown, to enjoy that type of moment in, in a game, do, can you see this being a little bit of a defining moment for him and how he how you know just in his development? Yeah, I think that's a that's a fair like first. That is a legitimate first. You throw your first interception, how are you gonna respond from it? And and I thought he, he handled it really well and, and delivered a big time throw. A big time throw. Um so yeah, I think that's that's a positive and, and something that we can build on. Um I think the other thing is we gotta continue to work at creating separation and getting open um, at tight end and wide receiver uh, to help with those things. Um, and I think we got to do everything we possibly can from a scheme standpoint as well. But, but I'm proud of him, and I do think that's a, that's a legitimate first to bring up uh, when, he, you know, when he threw his first interception today. Uh, they're driving on the field at the end there with the score 14-14, and Jalen comes up with the interception. How big a play was that, first of all, to kind of set things up for what you guys were able to do at the start of the second half, too? Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking situational football, whether it's four-minute, two-minute, middle eight, whatever it may be. That was, that was big. Um, and then, obviously, Jalen not only getting the interception but, but almost returning it. Uh, that was a big play. And then for us to be able to turn that into some points at the end of the half and then start the second half with some points, that's a real positive. It's something to build on for sure. Um, but yeah, we talk situational football all the time and that was a big one in this game. I agree with you. You guys have been able to do better than most teams in the nation is get after the quarterback. After giving up a couple big plays early, how do you guys remain confident in sending your uh, defensive backs to still get after the quarterback? Yeah, I, I think a couple things. I, I felt like you know we've done a really good job all year long at getting people off schedule on first and second down. I don't know if we did that as well today, and that's where the opportunities for pressures and sacks, um, you know, weren't as weren't as maybe common as they've been in the past. Um, but you know, you you look at you look at um, some of our defensive backs as well as some of our linebackers, including the defensive line with the sacks and the pressures. Johnny Dixon, I think, is having a phenomenal year. I don't know if he's getting talked about enough. Uh, locally or nationally as a blitzer, uh, being able to finish sacks, um, you know, being physical on the perimeter, you know, making plays on the ball. Uh, he's having a, having a really good year. I'm proud of him. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think whenever you can blitz and be productive from the secondary at the linebacker level or be able to create those pressures from your down four or three down if we're in our prowler package, then, then obviously that, that makes you difficult to deal with. Thanks, guys.